Can you sense the excitement in the air as we begin another, another marvel called BYU Campus Education Week? There's nothing quite like it in scope or quality in all the world. Over 180 of the world's best and brightest have spent long hours preparing their presentations to provide more than 1,100 classes ranging from deep doctrine to folk dancing, from family marriage to the healing wings of music. Over 33,000 righteous individuals with an inquiring mind like you have traveled near and far, many at great sacrifice, with a sincere desire to learn more and be better prepared to serve. We meet on this extraordinary campus where singularly worthy students gain knowledge from an intensely devoted faculty in a spiritually centered environment. I thank President Rex Lee and Education Week Director Mac Palmer and the others who organized this remarkable activity for wisely selecting the inspiring theme, Education Guided by the Light. Fundamental principles undergird that theme as one ponders the significance of the focus the theme provides, many appropriate applications become evident across the broad, broad spectrum of meaningful education. I have chosen to concentrate on the subject, acquiring spiritual knowledge. Although the thoughts expressed have relevance to the acquisition of all worthy knowledge. One may ask, why center on spiritual knowledge? President Kimball gave this answer. Spiritual learning takes precedence. The secular without the foundation of the spiritual is like the foam on the milk, the fleeting shadow. Do not be deceived. One need not choose between the two, for there is opportunity to get both simultaneously. Secular knowledge, important as it may be, can never save a soul, nor open a celestial kingdom, nor create a world, nor make a man a god. But it can be most helpful to that man placing first things first, has found the way to eternal life, and who can now bring into play all knowledge to be his tool and servant. President J. Reuben Clark observed, there is spiritual learning just as there is material learning. The one without the other is not complete. Speaking for myself, if I could have only one sort of learning, that which I would take would be the learning of the Spirit, because in the hereafter I shall have opportunity in the eternities which are to come to get the other. And without spiritual learning here, my handicaps in the hereafter would be all but overwhelming. President Gordon B. Hinckley stated, this restored gospel brings not only spiritual strength, but also intellectual curiosity and growth. Truth is truth. There is no clearly defined line of demarcation between the spiritual and the intellectual. When the intellectual is cultivated and pursued in balance with this pursuit of spiritual knowledge and strength. The Lord said, and then he continued, the Lord Almighty, through revelation, has laid a mandate upon this people in these words, Seek ye out of the best books words of wisdom. Seek learning even by study and also by faith. Your presence here indicates that you understand and follow that admonition of the Lord. The Savior emphasized, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Before I proceed, I would particularly like to commend you mothers in attendance. I know your present indicates great sacrifice on your part, as well as cooperation of family members and others who temporarily care for the children upon whom you concentrate the cream of your effort to train them in the way of the Lord. We thank you for such devotion. You are following 
this admonition of Sister Kimball. I have always had an inquiring mind. I'm not satisfied just to accept things. I like to follow through and study things out. I learned early to put aside those gospel questions that I could not answer. I had a shelf of things I did not understand. But as I have grown older and studied and prayed and thought about each problem one by one, I have been able to understand them better. A woman to be well-rounded, says Sister Kimball, in her personality needs many experiences in and out of the home. She needs to keep growing, to keep aware of the world in which her children are growing. In order to do this, she should be interested in educational advancement. We commend you for that interest. My message is centered in a statement of principle that is then illustrated by examples and from the scriptures and the prophets and the crucible of personal experience. That statement is, I'm going to read it slowly so those of you who take notes might record it because it will be a guide for all else that I say today. To acquire spiritual knowledge and use it with wisdom, one must in humility seek divine light, exercise faith in Jesus Christ, and strive diligently to keep his commandments. I'll repeat that. To acquire spiritual knowledge and use it with wisdom, one must in humility seek light, exercise faith in Jesus Christ, and strive diligently to keep his commandments. As knowledge unfolds, it must be understood, valued, used, remembered, and expanded. The balance of this message will center on explaining what is meant by that statement in a hope that it might provide suggestions that will help you in your quest for truth throughout your life. <clears throat> then in time, you and I may accomplish this objective given by President Joseph F. Smith. The greatest achievement mankind can make in this world is to familiarize themselves with divine truth so thoroughly, so perfectly, that the example or contact of no creature living in the world can ever turn them away from the knowledge that they have obtained. In the footsteps of the Master is the safest and surest course to pursue. We can absorb the precepts, the doctrines, and the divine word of the Master without any fear that that exemplar will fail in carrying them out. From my boyhood, said President Smith, I have desired to learn the principles of the gospel in such a way and to such an extent that it would not matter to me who might fall from the truth. Who might fail to continue to follow the example of the Master? My foundation would be sure and certain in the truths that I have learned. I know, said he, of but one in all the world who can be taken as the first and only perfect standard for us to follow. He is the only begotten Son of God." End quote. Why seek divine light? These scriptures answer that question. The entrance of thy word giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Lord is my light and my salvation. In whom shall I fear? The Lord is, my, is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I, the Lord, the kingdom of heaven, will be their king and will be a light unto them forever that hear my words. For behold, it is I that speak. Behold, I am the light which shineth in darkness, and by my power I give these words unto thee. And now verily, verily, I say unto ye, 
put your trust in that spirit which leadeth to do good, yea, to do justly and to walk uprightly, to judge righteously. And this is my spirit. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart to you of my spirit, and then ye shall know, or by this ye shall know, all things whatsoever ye desire of me, which are pertaining unto the things of righteousness, in faith believing in me, ye shall receive. And now a commandment I give unto you, to give diligent heed to the words of eternal life. For ye shall live by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. For the word of the Lord is truth, and whatsoever is truth is light, and whatsoever is light is spirit, even the spirit of Jesus Christ. And the spirit giveth light to every man that cometh into the world, and the spirit enlighteneth every man through the world that hearkeneth to the voice of the spirit. And every one that hearkeneth to the voice of the Spirit cometh unto God, even the Father. Finally, the glory of God is intelligence, or in other words, light and truth. I have commanded you to bring up your children in light and truth. Analogies with physical light light help us understand the power of spiritual light. A bulb ignited in a dark room overpowers the darkness. Yet if the darkness were too intense, it can overpower light, as with a bulb plunged into a bucket of black printer's ink. Spiritual light overcomes the darkness of ignorance and disbelief. When transgression severely clouds a life, the focused spiritual truths of repentance cut the blackness as a laser penetrates the darkest ink. Why must one in humility earnestly seek divine light? Does it really require that much effort? Elder Henry B. Eyring, Commissioner of Education, learned a treasured lesson that has served him well from his father, Henry Eyring. We remember that father as a world-renowned scientist and educator whose brilliance left a heritage of fundamental scientific principles that remain prized today. At a time when his son was at a pinnacle of formal education, having received his master's and doctor's degrees from Harvard, and serving as a professor in the Stanford Graduate School of Business while a visiting Sloan faculty member at MIT, the father said, Hal, you have a problem. You are confused. You think education is where you've been. It is not. It is what you do, not where you go to do it. You can get an education anywhere if you work hard enough at it. You can go into the desert with a good book and blackboard and diligent work, and you can become educated. Brigham Young paid the price of learning by carefully listening to the prophet Joseph Smith and striving to understand in context everything that was taught by word example, or the spirit. The resulting tutoring has blessed generations. It conditioned Brigham to learn additional truths and to share far more than he had received personally from Joseph Smith. In my judgment, so much effort and personal effort is required to gain and use worthwhile knowledge that one simply cannot sample from every fascinating area of life, but must carefully select a few vital areas where focused energy can be applied to bless our lives and those we serve. Again, my personal experience confirms that to gain knowledge of great worth requires extraordinary effort. 
through personal involvement. This is particularly true when our desire is to gain spiritual knowledge. President Kimball said it this way, the treasures of both secular and spiritual knowledge are hidden, but hidden from those who do not properly search and strive to find them. Spiritual knowledge <clears throat> is not available merely for the asking. Even prayers are not enough. It takes persistence and dedication of one's life. The knowledge of things in secular life are of time and are limited. The knowledge of the infinite truths are of time and eternity. Of all the treasures of knowledge, the most vital is the knowledge of God, his existence, powers, love, and promises." End quote. Why is humility essential to acquiring spiritual knowledge? Humility permits us to be taught from on high through the Spirit or to be taught from sources whose origin was inspiration from the Lord, such as the scriptures. Understanding growth and then growth germinate and they flourish in the fertile soil of humility. Their fruit is spiritual knowledge to guide us here and in the hereafter. A proud individual cannot know the things of the Spirit Paul taught this truth, saying, For what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but of the Spirit of God. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. What do I mean by that statement? As knowledge unfolds, it must be understood, valued, used, remembered, and expanded. I'll explain each concept. Understood. As each element of truth is encountered, it should be carefully examined in the light of prior knowledge to determine where it fits. It needs to be twisted, turned inside out, and studied from every vantage point to discover any hidden meaning. It must be reviewed in perspective to confirm that you have not jumped to false conclusions. Prayerful pondering engenders further understanding. Such evaluation is particularly important when truth comes as an impression from the Spirit. Valued. The Lord said, He who received all things with thankfulness shall be made glorious. And the things of this earth shall be added unto him, even an hundredfold, yea, more. To value knowledge is to show appreciation for it, especially the heartfelt, heartfelt prayers of gratitude. Used. Application of truth is the surest way of making it eternally ours. It is the use of knowledge that causes its fruits to bear in our lives. One of the best examples I know of knowledge gained and how it should be used is expressed in these familiar words of President Kimball. We hope that the leaders of the members of the Church who have attended this conference have been inspired and uplifted. We hope that you have made copious notes of the thoughts that come to your mind as the brethren have addressed you. Many suggestions have been given that will help you as leaders in the perfection of your work. Many helpful thoughts have been given for the perfection of our own lives, and that, of course, is the basic reason for coming. Now, you're going to have a similar experience here at Education Week. You'll take copious notes, you'll be inspired, you'll record those impressions that come to you, and then we need to follow this statement of the Prophet. While sitting here, I have made up my mind that when I go home from this conference this night, there are many, many areas in my life that I can perfect. I have made a mental list of them, and I expect to go to work as soon as we get through with conference. That's where the real learning begins. Remembered. 
Brigham Young declared, if you love truth, you can remember it. Knowledge carefully recorded is knowledge available in time of need. Spiritually sensitive information should be kept in a sacred place that communicates to the Lord how it is treasured. That practice enhances the likelihood of receiving further light. Powerful spiritual direction in our lives can be overcome or forced into the background unless we provide a way to remember it. Joseph Smith taught the Twelve the importance of recording spiritual direction in these words. If you assemble from time to time and proceed to discuss important questions and pass decisions upon the same and fail to note them down, by and by you will be driven to straits from which you will not be able to extricate yourselves because you may be in a situation not to bring your faith to bear with sufficient protection or power to obtain the desired information, or perhaps for neglecting to write these things when God had revealed them, not esteeming them of sufficient worth, the Spirit may withdraw and God may be angry, and there is or was a vast knowledge of infinite importance which is now lost. That advice is meticulously meticulously followed by the presiding councils of the Church. I counsel to do it in your private life, and it will bring you great blessings. <clears throat> Expanded. This thought refers to the rich benefits that result as we diligently strive to enlarge and extend and increase our understanding of truth. Productive resources for expanding our knowledge of the scriptures and the declarations of the prophets. President Benson has counseled, we should make daily study of the scriptures a lifetime pursuit. I say to you that one of the most important things you can do is to immerse yourself in the scriptures. Search them diligently. Feast upon the words of Christ. Learn the doctrine. Master the principles that are found therein. Few other efforts will bring greater dividends to you. Few other ways will result in greater inspiration. You must see that studying and searching the scriptures is not a burden laid upon us by the Lord, but a marvelous blessing and opportunity." End quote. When one understands that acquiring and using knowledge with wisdom takes substantial commitment, He'll avoid the tragedy that can occur when teaching and learning become mechanical. Taken to extreme, there results a process that Elder Neil Maxwell characterizes as transferring the professor's notes into the student's notebook without passing through either's mind. You who have made the sacrifice to be present realize that education can begin by listening to an array of qualified experts where their stimulating presentations spark our imaginations and motivate us to learn more. The process can start there, but for us to acquire knowledge it must be understood, valued, remembered, used, and expanded. The need to exercise faith in Jesus Christ is understood by each of us. This beautiful opening hymn demonstrated that reality. That is a fundamental requisite of the plan of salvation. When that exercise of faith is coupled with urgent need, the personal growth and blessings that flow are transcendent. I'd like to read a sacred passage given in a conference by Elder Faust who expressed these feelings regarding such experiences. As I do, you sense how his struggling brought knowledge and growth. During the years of my life, and often in my present calling, and especially during a recent, recent Gethsemane, I have gone to my knees with a humble spirit to the only place I could go for help. I often went in agony of spirit, earnestly pleading with God to sustain me in the work I have come to appreciate more than life itself. 
I have on occasion felt the terrible aloneness of the wounds of the heart, of the sweet agony, the buffetings of Satan, and the encircling warm comfort of the spirit of the Master. I have also felt the crushing burden, the self-doubts of inadequacy and unworthiness, the fleeting feeling of being forsaken, and then of being reinforced an hundredfold. I have climbed the spiritual Mount Sinai dozens of times, seeking to communicate and to receive instructions. It has been as though I have struggled up an almost real Mount of Transfiguration upon occasion felt great strength and power in the presence of the design, divine. A special sacred feeling has been a sustaining influence and often a close companion. I'm sure many of you have had similar experiences as you've paid the price to learn them. The role of obedience in gaining spiritual knowledge is, is crucial, as this comment of President Joseph Fielding Smith demonstrates. Now the Lord would give us gifts. He will quicken our minds. He will give us knowledge that will clear up all difficulties and put us in harmony with the commandments that he has given us and with the knowledge that will be so deeply rooted in our souls that that knowledge can never be rooted out if we will just seek for the light and truth and understanding which he has promised us and which we can receive if we will only be true and faithful to every covenant and obligation pertaining to the gospel of Jesus Christ. To keep the commandments, we must know them. The best single source for learning them is the scriptures. Regarding this kind of search for light, President Joseph Smil Fielding Smith gave this admonition. And it applies equally to us today as it did when he gave it. Today we are troubled by evil designing persons who are endeavoring with all their power to destroy the testimony of members of the church. And many members of the church are in danger because of the lack of understanding because they have not sought the guidance of the Spirit of the Lord. Every baptized member of the Church receives the gift of the Holy Ghost by the laying on of hands. This, however, will not save them unless they continue in the spirit of light and truth. Therefore, it is a commandment from the Lord that members of the Church should be diligent in their activities and study the fundamental truths of the gospel that is, as it has been revealed. The Spirit of the Lord will not continue to strive with the indifferent, the wayward, the rebellious who fail to give light, to live within the light of divine truth. It is the privilege of every baptized person to have an abiding testimony of the restoration of the gospel. But this testimony will grow dim and even disappear unless we constantly are receiving good through study, obedience, and diligence, seeking to know and understand truth. Profound spiritual knowledge cannot be poured from one mind and heart into another. It takes faith and trust and diligent effort. Precious knowledge comes in a small piece at a time with great exertion and at times wrenching struggles. The Lord intends that it be that way so that we can grow and mature and progress. We are asked to do all that we are capable of doing first before asking for divine assistance. As you seek for knowledge, search for principles. Carefully separate them from the detail used to communicate or explain them. Principles are encapsulated knowledge, packaged to be applicable to a wide variety of circumstances. It is worth great labor to reduce information we gather to succinct statements of principle. 
While there is much value to be learned, there is only one arena of study where we can learn absolute truth, and that is centered in the gospel of Jesus Christ. The following personal experience integrates several of the points that I have attempted to emphasize today. Every time I contemplate this event, I am moved by how kind the Lord is in answering our pleas for help. It occurred some time ago when I had responsibility in Mexico and Central America that were far beyond my own capacities to fulfill. I spent much sincere effort in seeking guidance and understanding from the Lord in study, prayer, fasting, and anxious service. Help came unexpectedly one day as I attended a humble meeting where an unschooled Mexican priesthood leader struggled to communicate truths of the gospel identified in his lesson manual. It was obvious that they had touched his life profoundly. I felt his intense desire to communicate those principles because they would be of great worth to his brethren. In this manner, there was evidence of a pure love of the Savior and love of those he taught. That love, sincerity, and purity of intent permitted a spirit to envelop the room. I was so touched that in addition to receiving again a witness of the truths he presented, I began to receive some personal impressions as an extension of those principles taught by the humble instructor. These impressions attended for me personally were related to my assignments in the area. They came in answer to my prolonged efforts to learn. Each impression came, and I wrote it down. I was given precious truths needed for me to be more effective. The specific counsel began with this impression. Continue to build the church on a foundation of two principles but with increased expression of love and appreciation for the great Lamanite people. There followed matters of great benefit to me. Then I had another experience in that same day. I visited the Sunday school class where an educated professor was presenting his lesson. That experience was in striking contrast to the one with the humble Mexican priesthood leader. It seemed like the instructor had purposely chosen obscure, unknown passages to illustrate his vast knowledge of truth. I'll confess that I had the distinct impression that he was more intent on that than in communicating truth, as had been the humble priesthood leader. This experience created another powerful environment in which strong impression flowed. I wrote them down. One paragraph began, testify to instruct, edify, and lead others to full obedience, not to demonstrate anything of self. All who are puffed up shall be cut off. Another signaled, you are nothing in and of yourself, Richard. That was followed with some specific counsel on how to be a better servant. The impressions came in such a personal way that I felt uncomfortable trying to record them in the Sunday school meeting, so I got up and went to a more private area. There continued to flow into my mind and heart impressions. I recorded them as faithfully as I knew how. After each one was written down, I pondered it, meditated make sure that I had properly interpreted the feelings that were intended. Then I studied their meaning and their application in my own personal life. Later, in that process, I expressed to the Lord what I thought I had felt to be sure it was confirmed to be right. There came a great feeling of peace and serenity as evidence of that. I ask if there was more I was to learn. 
there came further impressions. And the process was repeated until I received the most precious specific direction for which I'll ever be grateful. You can see the things that I've been teaching you are not theory. I've learned them in the crucible of personal experience. I'm sorry I can't communicate them more clearly. But I know how you can receive that kind of direction. Ask the Lord. Seek the light. Have faith in the Savior. Strive to obey his commandments. And he will bless you with light to lead you as you walk through this treacherous world in which we live. I know he lives. I certify he lives. He knows each of us personally. Your efforts to learn of him, to learn truth, to be better prepared, are appreciated by our Redeemer. And as you continue to walk faithfully, he will bless your efforts and inspire you and lead you to greater knowledge and capability. I testify that he guides this church. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.